Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. I hope you are doing great and having good health. And in this video, I'm going to explain a ray diagram in spherical mirror. Why it's important? Because we know that we need to understand if we placed any object in front of the spherical mirror, we need to find out that where the image will be formed and what is the positions, nature and size of the image. So for for searching that and to find the image nature size and the positions we need to understand from where the light rays are inversion and then it reflecting through which way so we can actually consider three type of rays to to find the size nature of an image so what are these three rays so you know that this is the concave mirror and these are the convex mirror so if you see in my previous videos i explained that what is the center of curvature what is the focal length what is principal axis and what is silvering and what is convex and concave lens so most of the cases i mean uh, the common concept and the basic discussion has already been discussed so now you think that in concave mirror and convex mirror where I mean, these three rays can be considered. Think about it. The first one is, we know that this is the center of curvature and also this is center of curvature. As you know that in concave mirror, this side is the reflectant side and convex mirror, this side is the reflectant side. The first ray diagram is that if alien light converging from through the C or the center of curvature and then after reflection it will come along the same path that means if any light rays reflected or converging to the to the mirror then after come back it will be say, the same path like this way think about it suppose in the concave mirror if a light rays falling into the into the mirror after the reflection it will maintain the same direction this is very very important to understand where the image will be formed if we placed any object in front of the spherical mirror think about it so in case of concave mirror if light rays going through the center of curvature it will come back to the same path and in case of convex mirror it's like it's like that suppose this is the imaginary line so if a line coming to the center of curvature then it will appear that it will appear that this light or the reflected light ray is diverging from the center of curvature this is very important that is why i'm just putting up inside that the concave and convex together so you can easily identify that what was going on in concave and what's going on in convex mirror in case of concave you see that things are coming this way but here it will appear like that the rays are diverging from the center of curvature this is the first law second law is if a light this is again C hmm? If light, I mean incident, parallel to the principal axis, suppose this is a light that is parallel to the principal axis and is falling to the concave mirror, and then when it will reflect, it will reflect, it will reflect to the principal axis or the principal focus. So when it will reflect this point is known as the principal uh, uh, principal focus so this would be f so this is the reflectant ray so it means that when an incident ray will be falling the, into the mirror with the parallel to the to the principal axis then it will come back again with this principal focus and what will happen in case of convex mirror if you see that if a parallel line is incident into the convex mirror then 
it will diverge or it will reflect from this principal focus. So it will be an imaginary line from this way and it will be like this. So it will appear that it's diverging from the principal focus. So this would be so much interesting when we will uh, draw uh, the, the image of the image of an object in, into the spherical mirror, both in case of concave and convex mirror. So I hope you understand if if any incident is falling just parallel to the principal axis, principal axis. So this is the principal axis. You know these are the reflectant side. This is not the reflectant side. This is the reflectant side in case of convex mirror. So the third number is the third number is just opposite of this principle. I mean, if this is the principal focus and if any light incident into this to the focus, then when it will reflect, it will be it will be just parallel to the principal focus. It will be just parallel to the principal focus or principal axis. So this is C and this is F. So a light is falling through the principal focus and then when it will reflect, it will be the parallel to the principal axis. And in case of convex mirror, it's similar. This is F. If, if a light is falling just, just to, to, to the principal focus of uh, the convex mirror, then it will appear that after reflection, it will be the parallel to the principal axis. So this is F, this is C, and this is pole. In every case, this is pole, and this is pole. So I hope you understand this three process or the three uh, diagram, race diagram, so that that will be helpful when we will um, design, when we will draw the image in case of when we will step uh, an object in front of spherical mirror. So this type of drawing, and that is why it's, it's necessary, like we have to be very accurate in case of drawing this kind of uh, pictures, when we'll do it, and maintain some sort of accuracy with your compass and with your pencils, so that it will be more accurate and more beautiful. So that should be errorless, and that should be without any flaws. So. 3 ray diagram in spherical mirror. So in the next tutorial, I'm coming up with the concept of image formation. As you know that there are two types of image, which is real image and virtual image. There are some differences between these and there is very interesting thing is coming up that is rule of six. And this rule of six uh, will help you to understand that what type of image will be formed in front of the spherical mirror uh, in different positions. So take care. See you on the next class. Allah Hafiz.